Hi everyone, this is January 10th, 2022 uh, Bible reading. We're going to be reading out of Genesis 24, Matthew 7, 12 through 29, Psalm 9, verses 9 through 20, and then Psalm 91. Let's uh, start off with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you uh, come into this Bible study. We invite the Holy Spirit. Um, you are welcome here. We want you involved with this Bible reading. Please show us what you want to show us today. Lord Jesus, we praise you and we thank you and um, we love you and um, we try every single day to be be obedient and be your servants. Um, uh, we are trying to be your hands and your feet. And thank you for your son who died on the cross. Um, just be with us while we read today. Allow me to speak smoothly, to um, pronunciate words properly, to deliver the message that you want me to deliver how you want me to read, what you want me to read, and then um, for whatever, whoever's watching this, to receive what they are supposed to receive, Lord Jesus. I ask these things in your precious name. Amen. The Lord also keeps safe those who suffer. He is a safe place in times of trouble. Psalm 9, 9. The Psalms often speak of God as a refuge. Whether you face something large like oppression or something smaller, he wants you to turn to him in troubled, troublous times. Size does not matter, but your trust in Jesus does. Nothing you face in a shock is a shock to him. He knows your troubles and has not deserted you. So go to your refuge and take strength from him. What are your top three priorities today? What's on your schedule and your to-do list today? Did you get to everything yesterday? How did you do on your drinking um, your water yesterday? Are you improving um, this being a weekend um, and maybe eating and drinking things that maybe take away from your hydration? Are you needing to drink more water and hydrate a little bit more this weekend? Um, what are your reflections on today's Bible reading? And let's move on to Genesis 24. I looked briefly through my Bible and couldn't find it in my stack. My Bible, it came off of the binding right here. And, um, I love my Bible. I have so many no notes in there. So it's really hard for me to throw it away, but it is not easy to, to go through. So I do still have my husband's Bible here. And I'm going to read out of this one, Genesis 24. Give me spit on his pages. <clears throat> Isaac and Rebekah. Abraham was now old and well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the chief servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me on to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. 
So the servant put his hand under the thigh of the master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. I wonder what that means, under the thigh. Um, oh, it says right here, in Abraham's culture, putting a hand under the thigh was how an agreement was sealed or a covenant ratified. <laughs> Can you imagine today? Put your hand underneath my thigh so we may make this deal. <laughs> To accomplish the same purpose, we shake hands. <laughs> yeah, it's a little less intimate going under someone's thigh. Um, or sign documents um, in the presence of a notary public. That's funny. Um, we'll dive deeper into that in, in the dive. Dive deeper. Then the servant took 10 of his master's camel camels and left taking with him all kinds of things from his master he set out for aram naharim and made his way to the town of nahor he had the camels kneeled down near the well outside the town it was toward the evening the time the women go out to draw the water then he prayed, O Lord God of my master Abraham, give me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside the spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, please let down your jar and I may have a drink. And she says, drink and I will water your camels too. Let her be the one who have chosen for your servant Isaac. That just overwhelms me. I think that's so cool when we're so obedient and we speak to the Lord and we ask the Lord to do something and it comes to fruition. I just think that's just so um, magical and and I know it's not magic. Uh, that's not the word I'm trying to think of, but um, um, miracle. It's a it's it's a miracle. It's, it's and it doesn't always have to be a huge thing, but that God keeps his word. And when we're obedient and listen to him, I just think that's really, really cool. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever lain with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. This is so cool. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water and drew enough for all his camels without saying a word. Wouldn't that be, I mean, you would just be mesmerized, but that's exactly what God said that she was going to say, that you knew that she was going to be his wife. This is the one. The man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring weighing a becca and two gold bracelets weighing 10 shekels. And then he asked, whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, bore to... Nahor. And she added, we have plenty of straw and fodder as well as room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshiped the Lord saying, praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness, faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now, Rebekah had a brother named Laban, and he hurried out to the man at the spring. <clears throat> as soon as he had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms, 
and had heard Rebekah tell what the man had said to her, he went out to the man and found him standing by the camels near the spring. Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, he said. Why are you standing out here? I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man went to the house and the camels were unloaded. Straw and fodder were brought for the camels and water for him and his men to wash their feet. Then food was set before him, but he said, I will not eat until I have told you what I have to say. Then tell us, Laban said. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master abundantly and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, men servants and maid servants and camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, was born Master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son, <coughs> excuse me, in her old, old age. And then he had given him everything he owns. And my master made me swear an oath and said, you must not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but go to my father's family and to my own clan and get a wife for my son. Then I asked my master, what if the woman will not come back with me? He replied, the Lord before whom I walked will send an angel with you and make your journey a success so that you can get a wife for my son from my own clan and from my, my father's family. Then when you go to my clan, you will be released from my oath. Even if you they refuse to give her to you, you will be released from my oath. When I came to the spring today, I said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if you will, please grant success to the journey in which I have come. See, I'm standing beside the spring. If a maiden comes out to draw water and I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jar. And if she says, drink and I'll draw water for your camels too, let her be the one that the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She sent down. She went down to the spring and drew water. And I said to her, please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, drink and I'll water your camels too. So I drank and she watered the camels also. I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Milka bore to him. Then I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed down to worship the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master, Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so I may know which way to turn. Laban and Bethuel answered, this is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here is Rebecca. Take her and go and let her become the wife of your master's son. The Lord had has directed. <coughs> Excuse me. When Abraham's servant heard what they said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out gold and silver jewelry and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up in the next morning, he said, send me on my way to my master. But her brother and her mother replied, let the girl remain with us 10 days or so, and then you may go. But he said to them, do not detain me now that the Lord has granted success to my journey. Send me on my way so I may go to my master. Then they said, let's call the girl and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, will you go with this man? She says, I will go. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, our sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her maids got ready and mounted their camels and went back with the man. 
So the servant took Rebekah and left. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahai Roy, for he was living in the Negev. He went out to the field one evening to meditate, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebekah also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is the man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master. The servant answered, so she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebekah. So she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. <coughs> and that is the conclusion of Genesis 25. Genesis 25. 24. 24. Oh, that's, yep. Yeah. Genesis 24. Now we're going to move on to Matthew 7, verses 12 through 29. Matthew 7, verse 12. 12. Oh yeah, I'm reading that over again. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the of, and the prophets. Jesus teaches about the way to heaven. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Ain't that the truth? Jesus teaches about fruit in people's lives. Verse 15, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire thus by their fruit you will recognize them we're doing through 29 so that is through the rest of this chapter jesus teaches about those who build houses on rock and sand not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy, prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone will hear these words of mine and put them into practice. It is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of law. And that concludes Matthew 7, verses 12 through 29. We're going to move on to Psalm 9, verses 9 through 20. Psalm 9, 9 through 20. So that concludes the rest of Psalm 9. <clears throat> the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you. For, your for you, Lord, you have never forsaken those who seek you. 
Sing praises to the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. O Lord, see how many enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that, that I may declare your praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion. And there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked return to the grave. All the nations that forget God, but the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted ever perish. Arise, O Lord, let not man triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. And that's the conclusion of Psalm 9. Verses 9 through 20. And then we're going to move on to Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Amen. Thank you for following along. This is January 10th, 2022, Genesis 24, Matthew 7, 12 through 29, Psalm 9, verses 9 through 20, and Psalm 91. If you have any questions, let me know. Any additions to add to... Um, the scripture that we've read, um, if you want me to pray about anything, message me. If you need a Bible, let me know. I'll send you one. If you don't know Jesus, let me know. I'll explain it. Um, that's it. I will see you tomorrow. God bless you.